Brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus, gloriously risen from the dead, now sits at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us and to send us as witnesses of his life and of the reign of God. 
So we bring to the table of the Lord our personal intentions, the intentions proposed to us by the friends of the Collegio and our votive candle offers. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Santo, 
God, that we who believe that your only begotten Son, our Redeemer, ascended this day to the heavens, may in spirit dwell already in heavenly realms, who live and reign for with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times of, or season that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The Word of the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts His throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amidst trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his soul to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For the King of all the earth is God. Sing hymns of praise. 
God reigns over the nations. God sits upon His holy throne. God's mouth is thrown to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. Everything from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace one body, and one spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and all in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, he ascended on high and took prisoners captive. He gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended into the lower region of the earth. The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might feel all things. And he gave some of apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain the unity of faith and acknowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The Word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we thank God for bringing us together as one 
community, as one church, in this celebration of the solemnity of the ascension of the Lord. At nagpapasalamat po tayo sa mga kapatid natin na patuloy na nakikiisa sa pagdiriwang po ng mga panalangin at misa dito po sa Kolegyo Filipino. Makakaasa po kayo na ang inyong mga uh, intensyon ay pinagdarasal po ng ating sambayanan dito. The Ascension of the Lord. If we look at the Gospels and the New Testament, we don't have one unified uh, version of the Ascension. Did it happen 40 days after the resurrection? Well, uh, that's St. Luke. But when you look at St. John, it seems uh, we were not given uh, a length of time. In fact, we are, are given the impression that the risen Lord who appeared to the disciples in the room had already ascended and from heaven would come and visit his disciples. Uh, but let us not uh, worry about that. No. It is one, one paschal mystery. One mystery of the passion, death, resurrection, glorification of the Lord Jesus leading to the giving of the Holy Spirit. But liturgically and biblically, we are given different aspects of the one mystery. So we, we focus on the death, the crucifixion, at one moment. Then we focus on the resurrection, the victory over sin and death. Now, and then now, we focus on the glorification of the risen one. He is recognized not only as fully God, but also as someone who has assumed a human body. Now, in the Trinity, the Son of God, who at the fullness of time became human, now returns to the Father without abandoning His being human. In the Oriental churches, uh, they have, uh, I don't know if it is a prayer or uh, a reflection, you know, the angels marveled that, wow, there is a human being in the Trinity. Hindi naman siguro na ingit. But, wow, what a mystery. You know? uh, the second person in the Trinity, fully God, but also human. Human. And there he continues his mission of interceding for us. And this brings me to the first point of my reflection. The ascension gives us God's way of exercising glory and authority. All authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and on earth. Especially the victory over sin and death. Eternal life. But look at how that glory is exercised by Jesus. He exercises that glory in full communion with human beings who are his brothers and sisters. He does not abandon the poor human family in fact, because he has become one of wounded humanity, he understands and he pleads with the Father. That's part of his glory to pray for wounded humanity. It is not a glory, it is not a glory that says, I am now enjoying after suffering. Now I am in 
I am enjoying what I deserve. So, I don't care. Bahala na kayo sa buhay nyo. Dumaan din ako dyan, nagpapahinga na ako, huwag nyo na akong guguluhin. Very often, we exercise glory that way. We just get a bit of a promotion in our office, and after that promotion, nako. We feel distant already from our companions. Uh, we, we think of our position as also uh, an imposition of distance from the others. Hey, uh, I am supervisor. You're under me. So, do not, do not call me by my nickname. Huh? When we were together in the office, okay lang, you call me Chito. But now I am supervisor, call me Sir. Naging barangay captain lang, no? Pati ang tono ng boses, nag-iiba na. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Trying to impress upon people that now I have weight. And you must recognize that weight. And that weight, you do not possess. So there is a chasm separating me from you. That's the glory of the world. That's not the glory of the risen one. In fact, in the first reading, he continued to teach the disciples. He knew how slow they were in understanding. So he patiently accompanied them. He did not raise his hands and said, I've already taught you for three years. You are a hopeless case. I, <laughs> I leave you to yourselves. No. He continued. Continued teaching them. So this is one important lesson. The glory of God is always shown in His compassion, in His solidarity, in His deep communion with the weak, with the simple. True glory, true divine glory is manifested in humility, in selflessness and never, never in discrimination, in looking down at others and pretending that I am already higher than the rest. And the caution to, uh, 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 especially to our kababayans, no? once I was uh, coming here to Rome, no? from Manila. And, hindi naman po ako nag-gossip, hindi naman ako nag-chichismis, no? but the two persons beside me were talking very loudly, no? kaya I could hear. They were complaining, complaining, complaining. No? Ang init-init naman sa Pilipinas. Mabuti pa sa Europe. Press call. Oh, eh, kailan pa nagka-winter sa Pilipinas? Ang ingay-ingay, tinublog ko, eh kayo nga, napaka-ingay ngayon eh, hindi ako. Naka-Europe lang kung matamatahin ang pinanggalingan. Pero habang nagkukwento, nakain naman ng kain ng mga chicharon, mga cornix. Oh, ba't di kayo kumakain ng mga miryandang European? Tama na nga yung mga arte-arting ganyan. The ascension teaches us, hey, even the one who is in heaven remained human, remained a brother, and never despised the weak and the lowly. Never. And that leads me to the second point. The one seated at the right hand of the Father equips, according to St. Paul, equips his brothers and sisters with many gifts to be of service to others, 
to serve the church, to strengthen the church, and to witness to Him, to preach the gospel, and to perform signs. He calls us to be His collaborators. At the same time, He equips us. In fact, the gospel ends with this. The Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The one who has returned to God never leaves his brothers and sisters. He accompanies them he accompanies them so that they could also do their mission. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And he accompanies them, giving them in his name the capacity to preach and to perform signs. And so whatever we are able to do in the church, for the strengthening of the church, whatever mission we are able to accomplish, it is thanks to the one who ascended to heaven and who puts his full trust in us so that his mission would be continued by us. The closer one is to God, the closer that person is to the world. It is not either or. In the, in the Lord who has ascended into heaven, we know, mas malapit ka sa Diyos, mas malapit ka pa rin, lalo kang lumalapit sa kapwa. At sinasamahan mo sila para magampanan ang kanilang misyon. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us, by looking at heaven, no? looking up to heaven also no? hear the Lord directing our eyes also to the world where we need to make his word known and his presence felt but let us learn from him the world suffers so much by a misuse of glory power authority Never, never should that happen again. And let us Christians be a model of how to use glory, authority, and power. It is always in a selfless, humble way. That is the sign that must accompany our preaching of the word. The sign that reminds them the glorious Lord remains with us as a humble brother, as one wounded like us, and therefore can intercede for us before the Father. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. And the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this day of the ascension of Christ, let us pray with amazement, wonder, awe, and astonishment, joining Christ who intercedes for all the world before God. Let us offer our prayers to God, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, we stand amazed, for Christ ascended from the earth in order to be to be everywhere at once. We are in awe, for in living Jesus has not left us alone. We thank you, O God, for the life, your, life of your Son. Turn our eyes continually to see, to gaze with wonder at your miraculous ways. O God of wonder, Lord, hear our prayer. Turn the eyes of the ordinary people, young and old, poor and rich, to see signs of Jesus. Show us everywhere the signs of Jesus, who is raised up and giving freedom and working power and justice. O God of wonder, Lord, hear our prayer. Turn the eyes of your church to see the poor, the poor places in which Christ now dwells. Help us to see the body of Christ, wounded and yet bright with the light of the Spirit. O God of wonder, Lord, hear our prayer. Turn the eyes of the leaders of nations to envision a new world in which peace and harmony reign. Turn the eyes of all in power to see the oppressed and the needy. For all who live by your inner sight, we give thanks for more such people to lead the peoples. We pray, O God of wonder, Lord, hear our prayer. Turn the eyes of all gathered here beyond this place. Help us to look toward our glorified Lord, and then to look back on you, O God of wonder. O oh God, keep us in the spirit of amazement. Keep us believing when we cannot see. Keep us hoping while we wait. Keep us looking for your presence. Fix our eyes on the glorious one who ascended to intercede, who will come in greatest glory, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Santo, 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 Pagito Dios na pangyarihan na puno ang langit at lupa na rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ with the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. 
for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope and Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Amen. That you should enter under my roof, but only say to me, my soul shall.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate the divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. For our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, Saint Joseph, Saint Raphael the Archangel, San Roque, San Lorenzo Ruiz, San Pedro Calusud. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day His only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where He is. Amen. May He grant that as Christ after His resurrection was seen plainly by His disciples, so when He comes as judge, He may show Himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. And may you who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty know with joy the fulfillment of his promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. 
Go forth, the Mass is ended. My dear friends and brothers and sisters in Christ, I would like to share with you good news. We have in Rome a home for Filipino priests called the Pontificio Collegio Filipino. It is a place where we priests sent by our bishops and our local churches try to embrace the ministry of academic studies for service in the church. This institution, this building, has been in existence for the past 50 years. And so we are asking you to love this place and to support it. First, through your prayers. And secondly, through any help, financial material help that you could extend so that we can upgrade our facilities and provide a better home for the students and for our guests. Sa inyo pong lahat, maraming salamat. Mahalin po natin ang ating kolegyo Filipino sa Roma. College of Filipino. It is the home in Rome of Filipino secular diocesan priests, carefully chosen and formally sent by the respective bishops to pursue further studies in the different ecclesiastical centers in Rome. They may specialize in theology, philosophy, canon law, sacred scriptures, liturgy, history, communications, patristics, and other fields. They take up either the licentiate, which is a degree higher than the master's, or doctorate degrees for a period of two to four years. A rector, a vice rector procurator, and the spiritual director form the collegious group of administrators. They report directly to the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines, which has an Episcopal Commission on the Collegia. During the Roman sojourn, whenever no academic commitments allow, the priests of the Collegia make themselves available to exercise their ministry with the Filipino diaspora and seek to know and obtain a most useful pastoral experience with the local churches in Italy. During Christmas, Holy Week, and summer breaks, they may continue their exposure in Italy, in the Holy Land, or in the different countries of Europe or America, doing pastoral work studying other languages or undertaking some other priestly As a pontifical institution, the Collegio is directly under the Holy Father through the Congregation for Catholic Education of the Vatican. At the same time, the Collegio administration reports directly to the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, 
which has an Episcopal Commission on the Pontificio Collegio Filipino. Priest in Rome, live sub umbra petri, literally under the shadow of Peter, close to the Holy Father physically, spiritually, and doctrinally. They can regularly see the Pope, at least from afar, and have relatively easy access to ceremonies he presides over. Likewise, Collegio priests have direct contact with the memory of early Christians and saints receive classes at pontifical institutions from leading professors from different countries, interact with priests from different continents and cultures, and exercise their ministry with the Filipino diaspora and with the local churches in Italy and nearby countries. They learn foreign languages and with their knowledge of Italian, they have a more direct and immediate access to church information, documents, and pronouncements, especially those made orally or issued to news agencies in Italian. Such advantage of studying in Rome can hardly be obtained in other countries. Benedict XVI on the 50th anniversary of Collegio Filipino address its student priests and administrators saying, You have come to Rome not only to study, but to be formed according to the mind of the Church. This is why the spiritual formation in Collegio Filipino focuses on the permanent formation of priests. Aside from the usual help and means recommended by the Church, we encourage every student priest to give much time to the Lord in personal prayer. Our yearly retreat, monthly recollections, spiritual conferences, and holy hours are all geared towards this encounter with the Lord. because of the demands of academic life, and at the same time, of course, yeah, the demand of our spiritual life. You have to budget your time. But one of the other things that had somehow balanced our life here is, is the fact that we live here as a community, in games, in playing, in, in sports, and especially even in our conversations. Uh, as I have said, once a priest withdrew from the community, that's the beginning of the end, I would say. So here at the Colegio Filipino, we still try to maintain a common time for meals, common time for outing, common time for just, uh, you know, shall we say, recreation together, trying to talk to one another share things 